This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on Dr. Phil. You have no boundaries here. His mother-in-law won't stop meddling in their marriage. My mom told social services that we wrap our children in duct tape, lock them in a room, don't feed them. He was duct taping them at night, right, Matt? I took a piece of duct tape that big. I don't care how big it was. You want to choke to death? Now. Why are you so angry at them? She's been banned from seeing the children. You have been making these lies up, and it's a horrible stuff to say. One day, I will see those children. Guarantee it. And she calls her daughter the mother of all moochers. She wants her 24-year-old who sleeps all day to get out of her house. Does it matter what Dr. Phil says? Our crew got there at 9 in the morning. She didn't get her lazy butt out of bed until 4.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to prove that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no job. No place to live. Why do you have four children? I'm trying to help you. God, Mom, you are a liar. I'm doing the best that I can. You have the entire audience. Are you in my house on a day-to-day -day basis? No. You forget about them and talk to me. Shut up, I'm done. Leave you alone, no. Coming up. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Here we go. If you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to be honest. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Showtime. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Stand by, A, and relay, check in. Go, Dr. Phil. Okay, they've got their eyes on you day in and day out. Tracking your every move and your conversation. Sounds like the latest GPS locator, right? <laughs> now I'm talking about your mother. <laughs> now today, my guests are here to confront their meddling moms. We've all got them, right? Maybe they're in-laws, maybe they're your mother, but we've got this extended family phenomenon. Sometimes they are great resources, and sometimes they're great pains. <laughs> now, my first guest, Audrey, says that her mother, Mary, is rude, manipulative, and undermining her marriage. She says Mary calls her nine to ten times a day, tells her how to raise her kids, how to handle her husband. Mary says that she'd like to keep her nose out of their business, but Audrey keeps putting her right in the middle of it. Two sides to every story. Take a look. My relationship with my mother is very stressed. My mom controls my actions, the way that I speak around her, and pretty much everything that I do with the kids. Audrey is a spoiled brat. Mary meddles by telling us how to raise the kids, telling us what kind of a schedule they should be on, what kind of clothes they should wear, what we should be doing with them, where should we be taking them, when we should take them to the doctor when they're sick. Mom has called Matt names like fat, lazy, not a good provider, not a good father. He doesn't love the kids. I have called Matt a f a dumbass. Anything you can think of, I have called Matt. Mary dislikes me because being married five or six times, she doesn't know what a man should be like. My mom is a drama queen. She blows everything out of proportion. I argue with Audrey and Matt all the time. Audrey does not clean her house, do dishes wash the floor, laundry. She does not take the garbage out. My mom calls me nine or 10 times a day. I think it's too bad that both you guys just think about yourself and not the kids. I want to know who's gonna be watching the kids when um, your other half is going to be working. I'll talk to you later, bye-bye. You guys need to work get your something out and get it worked out or I'm going to. It 
pisses me off when I hear it. My mom butters me up by telling me what a great person I am and how good I am with the kids. After she's finished buttering me up, she wants me to agree on different negative things about Matt. Matt is controlling of Audrey. I think Matt has gotten physical with her. I have seen a lot of bruises on Audrey. I have never hit Audrey. My mom is very manipulative. She would love nothing more than to have complete control of my kids. Social services was called on Matt and myself. Someone told them that we wrap our children in duct tape, that we lock them in a room, we don't feed them, clothe them, they have dirty diapers. I'm 90% sure it was my mom. My mother will deny until the day she dies. I would never, ever do that no matter how I think they live. I took my mother to court over this. She needed to learn a lesson that she needed to stay away. At this point, she either needs to get help or we're moving and she's not coming with us. Tell me what's happening that is so hard for you to deal with every day. I feel like I'm dealing with uh, my mom's problems and my problems. Um, I, I feel like I can't really do anything without worrying about whether or not I'm going to have backlash on her part. You know, I'm afraid to go out with my friends or have somebody babysit them that maybe she doesn't know because I'm going to get yelled at. I'm just, I'm just constantly worrying about her. How old are you? Twenty-four. Twenty-four? But you're still worried that you're going to get yelled at by your mom? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you over-involved in her life? Definitely. Why are you doing what you're doing? She doesn't take care of her children. She doesn't take care of herself. She doesn't take care of the house. Matt works eight hours a day. He comes home and has to do dishes, do laundry, and clean the house and take care of the kids. She does nothing. The kids don't get out. Are you complaining about her as a wife? No. I mean, we've had some issues before that we've talked about, but we've worked it out, and I mean... Why is that your business? My grandkids are my business. Well, but you're not... I'm not going to let them get out of bed and eat dry cereal. Well, you might, because eat... they're not your kids. You, you don't... You, you understand that you don't no, have the authority to, to change that? I want them to be healthy. I did tell them they don't eat right. They don't have much money. At that point, they weren't making much money. He was duct taping their pajamas because they get out of them at night. Right, Matt? I took a piece of duct tape that big. I don't care how big it was. put it on the zipper to keep to him choke? from pulling. Do you want him to choke to death? I just want to be sure that, that I'm, I'm reading right what your position is. Mary, you say, I dislike both of them, correct? Yes. OK. I love them, but I dislike them. You say Audrey is a spoiled brat and yes. Matt is a fat ass. A fat ass? Yeah. All right. Uh, and a dumb ass as well. Actually, two asses. Um, I said I, I... And you said that he isn't a good husband and father. I don't think he's the best father. I think he favors one more than the other, as I do. Did you say that I feel like I have the right to tell Audrey what to do and how to keep their house? That's a quote from you. Yes, I did. Okay. She is a 24-year-old woman that is married with her own family. Why do you have the right to tell her how to keep house? Would you want your grandkids to live like pigs? Because that's how they live. Okay, I'll answer that in a minute, but you're going to answer my question first. That's fine. Okay, what gives you the right to say, to, to feel that you have the right to tell her what to do and how to keep her house? I guess I don't. Well, I'm... And I'm, maybe I should butt out. But that would be... But she pulls you in. Yes, yeah, she does. Is that true? Okay, because, see, here's the thing. You criticize her for being over-involved and being in your family, but yet... You reach out and pull her in. You ask her advice. You ask for money. You ask for different things no. with her to All pull her in. Of the night. No. All well, you said you did. Night. No, I don't ask her for money, and I don't ask her for advice. And she can tell you that when we're on the phone, I'll even say, "I didn't. I don't want your advice." 
I'm not asking you for your You certainly take that money when it's offered, don't you? Yeah. And it, but it comes with strings attached, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And you know that when you take it. Mm -hmm. So why do you take it if you don't want the strings that you say are attached when she offers that? There's been times when we've, we've actually needed just to get a bill paid. Lots mm -hmm. of bills paid. And I am there whenever you guys ask. I want it to be better. Okay, I'm going to take a break. Is Mary a meddling mom or is she misunderstood and trying to protect her grandchildren? We'll be right back. My mom favors our oldest son, Christian. She has since the day he was born. When I got pregnant with my youngest, Gabriel, she informed me that she would not love two grandchildren. Christian is my favorite grandchild. Gabriel is a lot like Audrey, a real angry little boy. I immediately thought that my mom was nuts. I was hurt, very hurt. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. On Oops! The Podcast, join me, comedian Julio Gallarotti, as I examine everyday life, the mistakes, the bad decisions, the goals, the jokes, the social engagements, and all things in between. I'm joined every week by producer and personal confidant, Ryan Lynch, various other comedians for witty, candid, and intoxicating conversation. Our listeners love Oops! for sophisticated banter, aka your mom could listen, and many feel like they're in the room with us chopping it up with old pals. You can find every episode of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. My mom asked to take the boys to the circus. I explained to her that they had ear infections. I did not want them to go. I had the children every weekend. I took them anyway. Why not? They're my grandchildren. I think it's a privilege for them to have me, period. We're dealing with meddling moms. Now that was Mary who says her daughter Audrey is privileged to have her around. But Audrey says that during her five years of marriage to Matt, her mother Mary has made their business her world and that she just wants her mom to back off. Now, Matt, let me ask you straight up. Um, are you hitting and beating and abusing your wife? Absolutely not. Are you dominating and controlling her? Absolutely not. You think he is? Yeah. Why I think do you there's think been that? A, I think there's been a few times they've had more than what they've had to drink and she's came home with bruises. How many times can you fall out of bed, Audrey, and hit your head and get a black eye? How many times can you trip over the fence that you keep up for the kids? I don't know what to say except for stuff how, happens. It's not, you're, I mean, you're not at the house every day. You have no idea how we I'm interact there. with each other. No, you're not. I'm there about four or five times no, a week. No, you're not. Okay. No, you're not. Okay. You don't see how we are together. Right. Okay. You don't care. Yes, I do care. If you did, then you wouldn't say hurtful things. <laughs> but it's okay for you to say hurtful things to me. What does she say that hurts you so badly? Just about Matt hitting me, and that's horrible stuff to say. People, you know, I don't want people looking at Matt like a woman abuser. If he ever touched me, I'd kick the crap out of him. <laughs> Jail. 
Do you think she's abused? What would I do if somebody hit me? You know what I'd do. You have been making these lies up in your head forever. We've been in counseling since August. I go every single week, and since we've been going to counseling, our marriage has been better than it's ever been, ever. Sometimes you have to take that step and go to counseling to get help for yourself. I understand and that. And for the person you're with, for the sake of everybody. I understand that. Try it. Audrey, you're not gonna sit up here. You're not gonna sit up here and, and try to manipulate everybody because you've done that all your night. You're That's right. why your dad has never been in your life because you're lie you're right. and you're a manipulator. You're, right. you're a manipulator. You're right. So say what hurts because that's why. I yeah. tried to get him to come today. He doesn't yeah. want, they don't want nothing to do with you. I Nobody know. does. Because I remind no. him of you. I talk to your dad all the time. All the time, your, your, your dad and I talk. Did you just say to your daughter the reason your father is not in your life is her fault? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you really mean that? Is that really what you want her to think and feel? He, Do you really want her to blame herself for her father not being in her life? Mary, Mary, just don't try to be right. Think about that. I had begged her dad. I had begged her dad to be in her life. I truly have. I call him all the time. Please, you know, behind her back. She said, don't call. I do it. I want her to have a father. Now answer my question. Do you really want her going through this life, blaming herself for her father not being in her life, or were you just trying to hurt her when you I, said that? Trying to hurt her. Do you want her to feel that way? No, I want her to be happy. I've, I've done everything I can to try and make them happy and make and do what I can to help them. But apparently I'm doing it the wrong way. Well, I'm doing it by... Well, based on results, you are. Yeah. I mean, it's not a matter of who's right or wrong. You only have to look straight ahead of you here mm -hmm. to see whether or not what you're doing is working. I mean, it clearly... You're saying, I must be doing it wrong. Look your daughter in the eye. Is what you're doing working? Is this the result that you want? Is this no. the relationship you want with your mother? No. Well, I got some honest questions for all three of these people and what I think needs to happen to put these kids first when we come back. My mother undermines me in front of my children. Christian has always called me Mama Kay. And when they go home, they start calling Audrey Grandma. My mother always meddles in my children's lives. I'm Mommy, by the way. Audrey says her mother is jealous of her marriage and wants complete control of her and her children. Now, Audrey says things are so bad that she's thinking of moving away just to find some peace, put some geography, some distance between them. Mary admits that she's nosy, but she says she's having a hard time letting go. Are you the best influence for the kids, in your opinion? At this point right now, I'd like us if we could get into a parenting class where we all are on the same page. I don't need pain. a parenting class. But we, we aren't no. parents. Okay. These are the parents, and they, okay. they got to do it. Okay. Why are you so angry at them? I value the, the importance of extended family. I think it is critically important for children to be able to go see grandma, to be able to have that unconditional love, to be able to have someone that doesn't have to go through the dailies with them and hold them the task and can spoil them and be sweet to them and all of those things that grandmothers and grandfathers get to do. That's a wonderful place to be and you're about to blow that really bad and I'm gonna tell you why. You have said, I don't wanna let her go. I don't know why she talks to F and Matt 
and lets him make decisions because he shouldn't be making those decisions because you should, right? You should be making those decisions with your daughter because you, you know best because you're older and you know better. Listen, listen hear me out. I am. And I know you're not going to hear this today, but my hope is yes, you're going to go I home am. and you're going to watch this 10 times. And finally, in a moment, you're going to see you have no boundaries here. You do not respect her husband. You think that she doesn't know how to be a mother and that she's lazy because you spoiled her. Yeah, I did. Okay? And so you think, okay, now I'm having to reap the benefits, so I got to fill the void. You haven't been a shining example as a mother. Are you married? Yes. All right, how many times have you been married? Five. Five. So this is your fifth husband. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's not a great resume for having all the answers. Can she do a better job as, as a mother? And can he do a better job as a father? I'm sure they can. I bet they can. I have, there's no doubt that they need to and that they, that, that they could and they should. And I'm happy to offer you any kind of parenting classes that you might want. I'm happy to offer to, to give you any resources that you think might smooth things out, make things go better, whatever. I'm happy to make any of those resources available to them whatsoever. What I don't want you to do is cut your mother out of your life. And in order for that not to happen, you've got to respect some boundaries. I will. Like it or not. Well, now, you know, and you can say it like, okay, you no, don't want me, then I fine, will. I'll just go over here and eat worms. No, I, no you know, I'm not going to do that. That's not what I want you I to do. Want, I'm here for help. What I want you to do is respect the boundary. Like it or not, she's grown. She's married. And she's gone. So is he. If she went and got a loser, somebody that you don't like, sorry. But you know what? Sorry, that's who she chose. That's who she's with. I don't think you're a loser, by the way. <laughs> Thank I'm just you. saying, if that's what you think, sorry, that's tough. These children don't need to lose their grandmother. No, they won't. They don't want, I don't want you out of their life. They won't. Be. I want you to be in their life. But to do that, good fences make good neighbors. You need good fences here. <laughs> you need good fences here. There will be one on my side. Okay, and you need to do that. You need to learn how to say no. I'm gonna. And, and you need, you are, it's your own family. Stand on your own two feet. If it's strings attached, then don't ask. Right. right. All right, now, do, do you get that I don't want you out of those children's life? Yes. Do you get that you don't want her out of those children's life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One day, I will see those children. Do you get that I do want you to let their marriage stand on its own? Yes. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, because that's what I want. Um, all right, next, she says that her mom needs to get out of her life, and her mom says that she needs to get out of her house. Now, their battle when we come back. Amy is currently living with my husband, David, and I. I have four children. I'm not the best mom in the world, but nobody is. Amy. Come on. Of course, whatever you like, you can never see. I am not a morning person. Hey, it doesn't matter what Dr. Phil says, but I'm gonna boot that f camera dude in the Today we're dealing with what some would say are meddling moms, and those some, of course, would be the children. But are they really meddling, or are they getting where they need to be? My next guest, Debbie, says she wants her 24-year-old daughter, Amy, to get a job and get out of her house. She says Amy is a lazy slob who sleeps all day while other people take care of her four children. But Amy says that her mom is just overbearing. She's on her case 24-7, telling her when to go to bed and how to raise her own children. It's a war between mother and daughter. Amy is my daughter. She's currently living with her four children here with my husband, David, and I. I watch the kids seven days a week. <laughs> I have four children, three, two, one, and two months. I get no respect, no privacy. Uh, excuse me! She has to know what's going on every minute of every second of every day. To ask you a question. Well, I'm not exactly of the... All right, I'm not going to open... Kind of questions. Ugh, she just, just tries to control me. 24 years old and I'm being told, go to bed. Why? Just as lazy at times. I need to get moving and I need to go to work. <clears throat> I'm not the best mom in the world, but nobody is. I was 21 when I gave birth to my first daughter. I didn't get to experience any of the bar scene or whatever else. There's been a couple nights where I haven't come home until like four or five. Typical morning at my house is like a zoo. Junior, what's the matter? About 7.30, I will have a tap on my door. It's 
one of the two girls. I have to get breakfast for them because Amy is still asleep. I will bring the two little ones in their breakfast, check on them, change diapers. Usually by the time I leave here about 9 a.m., I'm still calling Amy to get up off the sofa to take care of the kids. When she tries to wake me up in the morning, she is vicious about it. Amy. Amy. I am not a morning person. Amy. Oh, no, right. I am a groggy, miserable person in the morning, and she can't stand that. Amy, please. Oh, God. She wants me to jump up and be like, okay, let's get this done, this done, this done. And no. Just because I'm laying on the couch does not mean that I can't regulate what my kids are doing and I can't take care of them. I've always enabled Amy in every way. If there was a problem in school, mom took care of it. Problem with one of her friends, mom took care of it. She needed money, mom took care of it. In the last two and a half years, we've probably put out seventy to $80,000 to sustain Amy and her family's life. The last time I held a job was October of 2002. And they've never paid uh, rent, utilities, nothing. Amy's husband left for the third time about two months ago. Since he's been gone, there's only been one payment from him for about $200. Three times, my husband David and I set Amy and her husband up in homes. We couldn't pay the rent, so we ended up getting evicted. We ended up getting a, a bill for nearly $10,000 in damages. Those damages ranged from stains on the rugs, burn marks on floors, holes in doors, trash piled up all over the place, just plain filth and dirt. David gave Amy an ultimatum that she and the children need to be out by the end of the month. Debbie and I need our home back. We need our life back. Nobody is ever going to stop me from doing what I want to do and achieving my dreams. Okay, now tell me why you agreed to be here today. I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not opposed to getting, you know, having somebody else look in and say, hey, things can be this way and can be better, or, or it, like getting it, the help. Do you watch this show, or does it come on before you get up? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I'm just, no, I'm serious. They tell me, I don't so know when it comes on me. in your so, market. Yeah, I've they, seen your show many, 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 many times. You have? Yeah, okay. many times. So you got to know that I've got some hard questions for you. Hey, I got I some hard them. questions for you, and is for you as well, Dave. You, you got to know. Are, are you willing to answer those questions? Sure. Because they I, tell I me that you tend those. to throw tantrums and take off. Really? No, I tend to freeze up because if I feel like I'm being attacked, and I ask to be, you know, can you back off me for a little bit, let me breathe, and nobody knows how to back off me and let me breathe. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a chance to answer some questions because listen, interestingly enough, I think you two both want the same thing. You want her out of your day-to-day, minute-to-minute life. That's right. You want her out of your day-to-day, minute-to-minute life. What we can agree on is you both want the same thing. It's just a matter of how to get there. That's right. Now, how old are you? 24. 24. You have no job. I haven't been allowed to work, though. No place to live. No. Why do you have four children? And that's anybody's business to laugh and talk about. What? So all y'all have children that you, don't, that, that you were like about allowed to have or permitted to have? I have four children because I love my children. I was married, my husband and I were deeply in love, but things change. He started to treat me poorly, very poorly. But did, you have four, did you have four I'm children not on purpose? Bash. He, did, he treated her worse than poorly. All right, but I'm not here to bash him. All right. Did you have four children on purpose? <laughs> no. I didn't have any children on purpose. <laughs> I, I was going to not have kids or be married, but life changes, and I went with the changes, and I accepted them and welcomed them. You, you had I, four children yes. by accident? No. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They, they were okay, unplanned. My, my second yeah, two are poster planned. children for, for the pill does not work. And I mean, I'll, I'll openly say that. My second two, yes. <laughs> I was not supposed to have them. I was on the pill. I was preventing it. It just <laughs> didn't work out. Okay, but, but now you have them, and, mm -hmm, and, I love them. You know, and he, here's what your mom says. She, she doesn't doubt that you love your children, by the way. I don't um, think anybody does or is <laughs> insinuating that in any, love them. in any way whatsoever, and you've said nothing to the contrary, so nobody's yeah. suggesting that. Um, but she does say that you've refused to get a job, that you won't look for an apartment, that you won't even fill out the paperwork to get assistance for you and the children, that you virtually are 
are willing to do nothing to help yourself. Is that true or false? That's false, and I'm fuming right now trying not to go off. I don't tell her things, and she knows this, because she meddles, 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 and pushes and pushes and pushes and pushes until she hears what she wants to hear. Okay. So, therefore, the things that I do do, and I have taken steps towards getting a job. I have taken steps. I've contacted Just DES. recently no, you took steps I've, to get a job. Oh, bull, 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 bull. You don't sit there with me at night on the computer and reg and see what I'm doing, do you? Okay, do no. you sleep until 4.30 in the no. afternoon? I just don't answer the phone for her because I don't want to hear her well, in my when ear. When we came to shoot with you, we had an interview scheduled for 9.30. Uh, what time did you get up that day? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you, but also well, roughly, I was... Now, wait a minute. Wait roughly a minute. what time? Because my crew honestly, says you got up at 4.30. I came out of the room at 4.30. That does not mean that's when I was awake or not. Okay. But... All right. No, well, all right. Let me. I, all right. Hold on. Let me take a break here. We're going to find out why we had such a hard time interviewing Amy when we came to her house. And I'm not in home with you. Forget it. Nothing. It's 12:40. Amy's asleep. She's been asleep since last night. This is how I start my day every day. Amy. Come on, get up. Um, if you left me alone... If I left you alone, would you get up? If you left me alone and stopped nagging at me? Yeah, probably, because I wouldn't hear this <laughs> If I have my own place, I won't have to go out. I take my two-month-old daughter wherever I go, generally. Sometimes I do have her out with me until 2 or 3 in the morning, but it's not like we're out on the town. We're over a friend's house in a safe environment where no plausible wrong could happen. Well, Debbie says she wants her 24-year-old daughter, Amy, out of her house. She says Amy has four kids under the age of four, often stays out until 4 a.m., then sleeps all day while neglecting her children's needs. Now, Amy's stepfather, Dave, says that he issued an ultimatum. Amy has to get out of their house in one week or he's going to throw her out. The producers from your show arrived at 9 a.m. this morning to interview Amy. Amy, get up, please. Come on, these people are here. They want to sit down and talk to me. They can't sit down and talk to me if you don't get up. Aim. Yes. Come on. Of course, whatever you like, Your Majesty. You know, I don't mind the fact that my back is absolutely positively killing me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> really, it's really good. All right, are you showering or are you going to... I'm not doing a damn thing. I told you. It's 12.40. Amy's asleep. She's been asleep since last night. This is how I start my day every day, before I go to work. It's almost 2.15. The crew's been here since 9 o'clock, and I still can't get Amy out of bed. This is a normal day in my life. Amy, come on, get up. Um, if you left me alone, don't you think life would be a little bit easier? If I left you alone, would you get up? If you left me alone and stopped nagging at me, yeah, probably, because I wouldn't hear this Hey, please get up so I can... I'm moving! Come on, I'm moving. Huh? I'm going as fast as I can. All right, thank you. It's 4.03. She's still in bed, and I still have five with kids. I don't need my <laughs> aired out on TV. That's that simple, because you want me to be who you want me to be, and you never need to me for me. End of story. It doesn't matter what Dr. Phil says because you're never going to accept me. I'm going to boot that camera dude in his face. I will go tell them that you will not talk to anyone, that you are just being a bitch about it because. I'm being a bitch about it. I told you days ago that I did. All you have the to ignorance. do. The ignorance. Really, the ignorance. I'll stop it. All you have to do is talk to the producer on the phone. When are you going to grasp the concept of an adult? You can't make me do things I don't want to do. Now stop. I'm sorry that I've wasted your time. She just thinks I'm out to get her, I'm out to bury her, and, and I'm not. I love her more than anything in this world. So that's what happened when our crew went to interview you at the house. Is Amy, is that a typical day? When she addresses things, like brings things to me, it's not like, okay, let's sit down and talk about this. It's let's go into attack mode and just throw it at me in all That's one shot. That's not true. That is true, and you've always been that way. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. I asked you oh when I got the God. response to this. Mom, you are 
would you do it with me? <clears throat> and you said yes. No, and how did you? <clears throat> and then you changed. I said, this is your opportunity to tell the world how no, horrible I am. No, because this is your opportunity to tell the world how horrible I am. And you want me to be you. You want me to change I don't to want you to be me. me. Pardon language, but bull. You have always wanted me to be exactly what you no, want. No, I don't. You've never I been want able you to, to use the fact your that potential. I am who I am. I want you to be the best you can be. You are a smart, and beautiful young woman. And I am trying, but I say, you have to understand that I have to do things my way the best I can. And I'm trying to help you. I have to, to find you. my own way. For four years now, I have been controlled. I have been told how to live. I have been told what I can and cannot wear. Well, he's an idiot, not you. I understand that. But I have to find my own way now, and I've only been able and out of it for two months. I'm, not even. And we're trying to help you. And I'm taking care of you. four kids that I have to worry about how he... Out, are you, are, but let me ask you something, Amy. Are you taking care of four kids? Yes, I am doing the best that I can. And b we're any of you in my house on a day-to-day -day basis. No. I'm done. I'm sorry. I cannot do this for you. You have the entire audience. Talk to no, Phil. Look, forget about them and talk to me, okay? Look, you, you have to understand. You, you Shut the f up. I am Amy. done. I'm done. All right. No, this way. No. This way. Right. Okay, wait. Now, no, no, do do not do do not apologize. I listen. I've been doing this for 30 wow. years. That's why the first thing I said to her when she sat down is, I'm going to ask you some hard questions. Are you going to stay the course or are you going to throw a tantrum? She said, No, no, I'm going to answer the questions. So it it doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist to predict that coming. Dave, please. All, all I want to say is the the average day is that she is up between 10 and 12, somewhere in there. The kids are up at 7. I'll tell you what I do. I don't know what her mom does in the morning, because I'm usually gone early, but you shake the pillow a little bit, say, Amy, come on, I need some help, let's get going. I mean, this is, this is the average day, that she needs about two, three hours to wake up and get moving. All right? Well, that's fine if you're a child, but oh, she is a mother of four, that's and that's I'm what's so driving you crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and we're taking care of the kids. Now, All right, here's the... I love my daughter. I want her to know that. I love her. Now, I'm not... are you... Wait a minute. Are, are you going to sit here and go into a guilt spiral because she just threw a tantrum and stormed off the stage? Because let me tell you, I take, I take in all the data that's coming at me all the time. And what I see is she is playing you like a fiddle, Mom. I can't. I can't do it anymore. Okay, so but what? I don't want, what frightens me is that what you saw and that I'll never see my grandchildren again. Amy can be the most loving, giving child, but then she can turn around and be so spiteful and mean, and well, I don't want to lose my only child. I understand the dilemma. I truly do understand the dilemma. And I'm going to tell you what I think you need to do to get the best of both worlds when we come back. Amy and birth control never seemed to get along. When she got pregnant with the last one, I wanted to shoot her. Amy, not having been able to follow through with having an abortion on number three, didn't even consider it with number four. I love all of them, but not one of them was planned. DrPhil.com brought to you in part by... Get the Lakota Joint Care Formula. It helps lubricate joints and promotes joint flexibility. It works for me. Get Lakota. Since Amy and the kids got here, my relationship with my husband has virtually been non-existent. We barely speak to one another. We have no life. As far as intimacy, even holding hands has been basically zero for over a year now. I walk in the door and the girls want me right away. So there's really no time for David and I. Debbie and Dave say that they are done feeding, clothing, financially supporting uh, Debbie's 24-year-old daughter and her four children. They both say they've spent over $70,000 on Amy in the last couple of years and it's time for her to get a job, get out on her own, and support her own family. Now, Amy stormed off the stage because she didn't like my hard questions, although she promised me she wouldn't do it. She's in the bathroom, says she doesn't want to come out. 
Maybe she will, maybe she won't. I ain't going to chase her. I can just tell you that. I'm not going to chase her. Uh, but what I will tell you and Dave is, look, here's the reality. What, you, what I want to do is say that you really need to play hardball with her and you need to get her out of the house and get her on her own. But let's talk about the reality of the situation. There are four innocent children under four years of age here, and you are the victim of emotional extortion. She holds those children as hostage and says, if you don't do what I want you to do, I will take my four children and you'll never see them again, you rotten bitch. Now that's pretty much the size of it, right? At, at this point, you're, you're going to have to be willing to stop going down this shame spiral, this guilt spiral, every time she breaks your heart with a tantrum. She said, how can you say this to me? How can you do this to me? How can you say I'm not a good mother? Well, because you sleep while your kids are crawling around in filth. I mean, that's pretty much the deal. We can call it what you want. You can, you can walk on eggshells because you don't want to hurt her feelings. But she is not being a fit mother here. True? I can't say because she loves those kids. I didn't kids. ask you if she loved them. And she does take I care of them when you... she's awake. She's taking care of them. And she takes good care of them. Amy runs hot and cold. She's... I'm Answer doing the it. question. I'm yes. doing it. I'm doing it. I... I've defended her and made excuses for her all well, her life, and I'm still doing it. How is that it's working not, for you? It's not. It's not. I mean, really. I know how wrong I've been. I just don't know how to not do what I'm doing. Okay, let's go over that. So here's the bottom line. You truly, truly are going to have to quit making excuses for her. You're going to have to stop defending her. She's going to have to start to agree to a, a program of intervention here. She needs professional help. She's depressed. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have a plan and needs help with that. But none of this is going to turn around if you continue making excuses for her. I will get her the professional help. I will get her career counseling. I will get her help in every aspect that she needs as a single mother of four to responsibly get on her feet and do the right thing. I cannot do it if you sabotage my efforts. I'm offering to bring these resources to help her, and you've said you're not going to let her sabotage. Uh, no, I won't. We'll be right back. For more information on dealing with meddling parents and mooching adult children, go to drphil.com. Thanks to all my guests today. So long. Yeah.